Hi, this is Paul, the Library Director for the Brockton Public Library System. I'm here to welcome you to another edition of Everyone Has a Voice, the virtual version. Um, last time, I gave a shout out to all of our first responders, thanking them for the jobs that they are doing to keep us safe. Today, I would like to shout out to all the artists and poets, musicians that we have had uh, performing in this building in the, in the three plus years that I've been here. And certainly I want to give a shout out and thanks to the poets who have been performing for you virtually here on the Everyone Has a Voice series. Um, when, we, when we can reopen again, we will, and we will continue to have the arts when we reopen, and we will continue to do the virtual art, arts programs as we can. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show, folks. Here in the silence, sometimes I just need to breathe. Not the usual breath of inhale and exhale. Not the regulated process of moving air into and out of the lungs. But heart pumping, blood coursing through veins, propped up pretty blue centered in porcelain skin. I just need to stretch my inner human being. There are voices, the conscious, subconscious, that little voice snagging, the voice of reason of doubt, the cricket chirp of circadian rhythm, the deja vu whisper, was I here, the nowhere to be found feeling. Sometimes I just need to breathe, be in a trance, be lost in thought, be preoccupied, be abstracted, distracted, stare into space, be by myself. Once I had a lovely dream, a sweet dream it was. No more war, hate, or fear. People lived and loved as one. Once I had a sweet dream, a lovely dream it was. I woke up to reality and saw the perfect hell. The weight of the world shouldered an endless time. The space between past, future, claustrophobic. Tentacles lash out across imaginary reflection. Dormant cries released. I am screaming inside, here in the silence. Sometimes I just need to breathe. My name is Marguerite Bouvard, and my first poem, Silence, brings us the radiance of that vast, invisible world that is pulsating within us and around us, the fire of becoming, the many dimensions of being, the understanding that the true and boundless power is love, we need silence and solitude for our souls to flourish, to move past the noise, the chatter, the desire to be more important than another person. As we walk through life's journey, humility opens the door that separates us from the marginalized and the misunderstood, helping us to see the beauty within them. To know that we are all connected to every living being, flowers, bees, a bird's wing. To know that we are in the hospital with a child who has been wounded in a war. That we are made of light, not only flesh and bone. Perspectives. In a world of vast cumulus clouds, warming seas, filled with a stink of jellyfish, a world of deeper stings when a policeman shoots an innocent black man and then claims he was just protecting himself, where we do not see ourselves in the other and are blinded by hatred and a twisted version of history. There is another world, a drawing of flowers 
made by a four-year-old child, the hand reaching out to another, the scent of a hidden garden, sage, basil, thyme, the spurt of bushes growing out of ancient volcanic rock, green feathers growing out of destruction, nature talking back to us, love sliding through the crevices. Love Letter to Dorchester by Umelene Mklaba Adepo. I live on a street where trees have faces, where birds bebop outside my window announcing fresh days and leaves whisper our names as our feet glide to and from school. I live on a street where cars break dance to bachata and hip hop and wear flags like t-shirts so you know who set their repping. I live on a street with rotating doors like passports to other countries, the smells and sounds of foreign speech, music to my ears. I live on a street where our son has street uncles on Fridays playing checkers by Ashmont Station, dropping knowledge about life and good manners. I live on a street that has a farmer's market every Friday, dance-offs and vegetable remixes amidst the eruption of subway passengers eager for a drink at Ashmont Grill or Tavolo. I live on a street where I practice marathon runs, the curve and rise just enough for our six-year-old's little feet. I live on a street where sirens do double dutch in the air, policemen offer ice creams and smiles, teenagers drag bags like dogs reluctant for a walk. I live on a street where our mailman recites scripture like Jesus, spreading love in each mailbox as he passes by. I live on a street that has impromptu cookouts and wine versus beer offs on front porches, kids running around like bees, sleepovers, summer cookouts, reminders of what life should be like. I live on a street, now my village, now my tribe, my muse. This is Lou Fox. This is called Many Faces. If you gaze long enough, they'll peek back eventually. If your stare is bottomless, they become obvious. In the sky, in the frothy water that softly hides the sand from the scope of its ever-changing presence, in the billowing smoke of a campfire as I'm wiping s'more crumbs from my beard, and on the grimy walls of overused and underclean bathroom stalls. Faces take more courage than masks, but are much harsher on the heart. And not a soul can blame you for wearing one of your many masks, but going full on face should be the new black. Then again, association with the phrase, in and of itself, would imply its death. On second thought, maybe our masks are the most valuable things we own. Thanks. And this is Birds of Paradise. Vibrant and yellow-bellied, their blooming necks outstretch the vase like miniature giraffes plucking food from the hands that typically take their presence for granted. Their slanted triangular heads cast shadows through the spider-webbed corner of my sky-blue wall, like pennants hung commemorating the remembrance of life's unfair circumstances. Afraid I'd devour and slowly kill the person I was glad you were, my mind the flame to a Polaroid picture of a hopelessly vintage life. Every so often, I still find myself peeking out the window, looking for your warming shadow amongst the siding of the neighbor's house. The two of us, feeling sorry for ourselves that we were ever cut for this world, vibrant but yellow-bellied. Thank you. Hope. Bats, tigers, humans, virus, replication. China, Italy, Spain, the globe. Fascination, consternation, trepidation, U.S. governors, White House administration, family, friends, prime ministers, wives, disbelief and belief, face masks, Zoom, social distance and sedentary ways, flatten the curve, blunt the surge, isolation, violation, wine and more wine, sorrow, death. Heroes, health care workers, first responders, grocers, truckers, pensive, Pence, Fauci, Burks, Adams, unveil, prevail, hope, faith, prayer, love, salvation, victory, normalcy, smile again, laugh again, hug again. 
This is a poem by William Shakespeare from Much Ado About Nothing. Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever, one foot in the sea and one on shore, to one thing constant never. Then sigh not so, but let them go, and be you blithe and bonny, converting all your sounds of woe into hey, nani nani. Sing no more ditties, sing no more of dumps so dull and heavy. The fraud of men was ever so, since summer first was leafy. Then sigh not so, but let them go, and be you blithe and bonny, converting all your sounds of woe into hey, nani nani. Another poem about the Four River Bridge. A new bridge unlikely. The journalist. The Iron Swing Bridge of 1902 had been replaced in 1936 by a double draw of ornamented style with Art Deco handrails in bronze detail. The bascule bridge caused several accidents that added to the traffic and complaints. Soon pleas for a new structure reached the state, send us a bridge to love, not love to hate. The temporary, all that we could get, soon earned its given name, Erector Set. With panels, pins, and bolts on shaky piers, they built the thing to last for fifteen years. Not one to be the bearer of bad news, I call this bridge a comedy of errors. The Baker, Time to Rise, another poem about the Four River Bridge and a woman whose family lived on both sides of the bridge. The layer cake she brought across that day baked on one side of the river to serve on the other, light as a goose down, strong as a well-built house, was after the recipe she learned from her mother. When she arrived, the dining room table was set. The steamers were ready to serve on the kitchen counter, the chowder hot, the cornbread steaming. She put down the cake. Her family came in to join her. They uncorked the champagne and emptied the china plates, The coffee was waiting. She cut through the heavenly cake. It was airy as goose down, the icing sweet as a song. The promise fulfilled. The timing was all. It was a cake they remembered, a cake like no other, baked on one side of the bridge in the river, taken across a series of borders, natural, municipal, all for the love of a son, expressed by a mother. How many borders had she crossed that day? for the sake of the cake that might have offended their taste, impediments loomed in her son's adventurous life, in another town, with another impetuous wife. But it turned out to be the cake they remembered, baked and brought over the border, well known and traveled and run, across the bridge and the river, all for the sake of the love borne by one woman for her son. The City Dweller copes with quarantine. You haven't lifted up your eyes to see the spring in years. If pressed, you'd say you didn't have the time while jumping through the hoops of making it to work or getting caught in traffic while the errands multiply. So every year on branches overhead, the buds have crowned unnoticed on the stems. And underneath your nose, The blades of green have cut their way through last fall's sodden leaves to blaze a trail for this year's daffodils. Indifferent to your inattention, nature goes about her business. Now, for once, you're at a standstill. Be at last a witness to the season. Let yourself be changed. You, too, belong to reawakening. A mound of sand, a pile of tires was all it took for us to play King of the Mountain. You clawed up over limbs of other boys, stepped on heads sometimes and pushed. You yelled in triumph at the top and got yanked down almost immediately. Pitched face first and yelping in dismay, 
until you sprawled in rubble at the base and saw that all the other bodies were above you. You rose, redoubled volume, and began the clambering again, and so it went. A stretch of striving and a speck of joy accompanied by lungs and vocal cords. But if you found the view so special from the top, why keep it for yourself? Why not invite the others up to share it with you? Ah, my dear, I said. The world would be a better place if you were running it. <laughs> I meant that. What I left unsaid, I meant as well. Unruly boys in harmony of triumph and defiance pitched together cry out an understanding. We are meant for humbling at our moments of success. We need correction. Crowing, staring down that sun more than a moment isolates us, blinds us to the others and the climb. It's best to strive in company and help each other briefly to attain the peak, not seek to live alone at altitude. This is called Animal Crackers. Two children, five and seven by the look of them, walk close together just ahead of me along the sidewalk, looking down. In taking turns, they dip into the box of multicolored cardboard, lifting out one little animal after another. Siblings, it seems, with yellow hair, they lean in, meaning to shut out the world, but I, unnoticed, close, can hear their conversation. I bite the heads off first. <laughs> the younger one, the boy, says thoughtfully, so they don't feel any pain. <laughs> the girl, her tender curls, despair of adult beauties, bouncing down in rhythm with her words, replies, I bite the legs off first, so they can't run away. Oh, you were made. You were made for so much more than you give yourself credit for. Pretty face, multiply the human race. To be ravished, caressed, must we always be so stressed? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? A vision of God's creation, is that enough for me? Or do you dare not to compare? Can we have imperfect flair? This should be enough, it never is. The world rejects the very breath I take. Can I live up to my potential or relive every single mistake? We're living in troubled times, violent crimes. Do we react, just ignore and draw the blinds? No affect, lifeless numbing to the corruption in our head. Barely batting an eyelash when we hear that someone's dead. Don't become an emotionless void. You have a choice, be a voice, take a stand. There's no change. If you wait on others, you matter, extend a heart and a hand. Our fellow man is a dying breed. Be the difference, plant a seed. Give one another a reason to hope. Don't let one more person die from, ugh, I don't even wanna talk about it, Corona. Corona, where we've lost our hope. What you do now could even change history. No more sitting in silence. Your presence is but a mystery. This is not just my town, it's yours too. Be a part of a force that's much bigger than you. Seek opportunities to be your best. Reach out to the hurting, broken and depressed. Be a light in a dark place to heal the human race. Be the reason a smile is on a stranger's face. Do not be callous to one suffering and be kind. Add to the healing of others, soul, body and mind. Little things matter. If you see a problem, be a part of the solution. Don't be a burden in society's pollution. You were made for so much more, so see it and let it be your mission. It can change with the willingness to make a decision. Have a vision, give it life and purpose, open your heart. You can't begin a revolution if you don't do your part. The child in me has demons to get over. This adult is insecure. Afraid, always looking over her shoulder. You gave me life, 
but oh, the hell you put me through. I couldn't fathom the depth or measure of the struggles within you. There were so many days I hurt physically, I'd break down and cry. You caused this hurt, gave no comfort, and I still don't know why. A child, corrected with force, some discipline, left me in my room all alone. I hated the solitude, silence, isolation, even more now that I'm grown. This was abuse, the neglect, the shouting, your conditional love. I wasn't sure till now that I'm a victim of. This thing that happens at home that we don't talk about, revealing it will bring shame to your family, no doubt. I needed to be special, important, your delight, instead of disappointments of things I didn't do right. You're pretty, but act ugly. You're smart, but act dumb. Those words kept me where you wanted me, right under your thumb. I did my best. I tried so hard, but got nowhere. I got good grades, was well behaved, but you didn't care. Rebelling was the next course. Since I was a burden, why am I not enough? Tired of trying to please you, incessantly became increasingly tough. I was a star. I didn't know, but I needed to know my ability to shine. The gifts I had, you hid away from others as if they were yours, but they were mine. I entered a world that knocked me down and rejected me. It was no different than at home where no one respects me. Will I ever be something? Will I ever get those chains off me? I have to, but how? Push through the stigmas. I have to break free. It's a new day, a new dawn. Independence in my grasp. So I take it with both hands. Hard to attain, so it slips from my clasp. I can only go so far ahead. Then I'm lagging far behind. Still I say, this is my life, not yours. Negative thoughts start leaving my mind. I'm worth so much more than you make me feel. I had no other role model, so I believe that this was real. The longing to be held, accepted, to make you proud. Sadly, it didn't ha happen. I'm just another face in the crowd. I grew into a woman, broken, empty. There's a dimmer in my light, having to relive painful memories that kept me up at night. I forgive you now. I must forgive me too. I'm no longer discouraged by trying to please you. So I'm changing my perspective to whom I belong and reside. My heavenly father will constantly abide. For in God's sight, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. His creation and design, healing my inner soul, never again to wither, tarnish, or fade. I was in a dark abyss, my mind's reeling. It was so unproductive, the ways I've been feeling. I fought so long in silence, the pain I refused to show. Can I do it? Yes, I've done it. My confidence builds and grows. The child within is healing. Obstacles conquered a little more each day. When times of trouble come, I get on my knees and pray. God is my true father, so I'll please him with all my breath. And I won't stop this journey until the grave, until the end, my dying death. Hey everybody, this is Jason from Oddball Magazine. And I wanted to read a poem for Everyone Has a Voice. It's called Poems and Pens. Here we go. Jagged Thought 312 Poems and Pens. And you can catch all of my stuff at oddballmagazine.com as well as a lot of other poets, artists, and mental health advocates. So here we go. Uh, Jagged Thought 312 Poems and Pens. Imagine me 20 years old, almost 20 years ago. Look at all the poems that have come from that pain. Look at all the scars that I can relive on each page, every scribbled inch of ink must have been for something. Cause those full moon evenings, that slow, lethargic, manic writhing, legs twitching, hands shaking, mind not stopping to take a break, only medicine to put me to sleep, pills to make me feel awake, the eventual break that comes after each descending dip, each morning after nights without sleep, that quick thinking non-linear rotation, synapses firing, calm the baby with medication, sew the poet down with something to make the pen stop, and sit down, calm down, rest for now, watch the clock. That was for something, right? I'm a writer, and it's so exciting to be living. Not every day is perfect, baby, far from it. But it's a staircase that I'm climbing to my own personal island. 
Maybe there's a fight inside me, left to spring loose like baby teeth, maybe. Maybe I will just bleed ink if you cut me. Maybe I will bleed out in rhythm, the blood of a poet, a writer, a loose leaf writer. And today we talk a hope, right? Everyone talks the word down like a science. Like we just know what it is. Like Brandy said, it's just ingrained in us. Hope. Hope got me out of the medicinal farm. Hope came and woke me up. Folded my clothes, put them in a hospital bag with a wrist tag, signed me out. You want to talk hope? Knowing that you will one day get out, that's hope. Knowing a life where maybe you'll see ghosts of the poems you wrote in the bookstores, that's hope. Finding a reason for that goddamn thinking, knowing you have to wake up only to begin again, that's hope. Because there has to be some reason, right? It's not all for nothing, right? Maybe I do have hope. I have hope for the ones I've lost who left me lost in thought. To come back into my life. Say it's all right. You can come back. Say hi. I made it. I'm doing fine. Let's get coffee. And you can show me pictures of your family life. You, you were. They, they were. We, were. They were. My, no, you're everything. Because we aren't all alone in this longing. They were your shining light in the darkest night. Maybe they left you because the train of thought got too dark deep in the clouds. Maybe they mistook your thoughts for proud. Maybe those thoughts got so loud they started speaking tongues to calm you down. And that was then, but now is now. Hey, if that's you, then you are just like me and I still take the medicine, just a different prescription. You never knew me back then. Who knows, we might have been friends. But my pen is glistening with another 100,000 words just like this one. <laughs> Each poem written on loose leaf, scratched pencil marks could have been scars, could have been holes in my lungs, could have been broken bones, could have been, but just became poems. Poems and pens. That's all life is. Poems and pens, brushes and palettes, films and lens, strings and musicians. The heartbeat is a drum beat. It's all repetition. Mathematics, really, if you want to get deep about it. It's all math and statistics and heartbreaks and morticians and birthdays and weddings. Just black stars in the bright night. That's all we are. That's all that life is. If you want to get deep about it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This has been Jason Wright. Um, you can check me out at oddballmagazine.com. And thank you, Philip, uh, for uh, everything you do for uh, Everyone Has a Voice. And we'll see you real soon. <laughs>